Hello everyone and welcome back to the video. Today we're going to be going through the new patch that just dropped on live servers. So as you know, I made a patch video like a week ago and that was the preview available for people to test out on the pup server. However, now it's finally on live servers that actually just dropped like 30 minutes ago. And we're going to go ahead and take a look at the patch notes. They told us here that for all the changes from the pup to live servers to now, the changes will be highlighted in bold. So I highly recommend guys, if you haven't checked out my other video on the patch, definitely check that out. I went in detail on all the ch changes, but I'm gonna go ahead and skim through it in this video and I'm gonna mostly comment on the changes in bold. So the changes that are different here in the live server than the patch note video I made a week ago. Keep in mind what we see here like what we what we're going to read through right now this is 100% guaranteed everything that we see here will be in the game on this new patch it's a massive patch let's go ahead and hop right into it so starting things off we've got the new tech gambesons nothing has changed it's in the game now and uh, yeah it costs 100 food 100 gold gives the militia line plus one pierce armor it's available in castle age and you have to get it after supplies not every civ actually has this technology Moving on, we have general changes. I went through a lot of this in my other video, but we're gonna go ahead and read through it here. Uh, Eagle Scout, Eagle Warrior, and Elite Eagle Warrior cost increased from 20 food, 50 gold, to 25 food, 50 gold, so five extra food cost per eagle. It sounds like a small nerf, but when you make like 40 eagles, it actually starts to add up, and usually you make a ton of eagles when you go for them. Then we see Long Swordsman, 200 Swordsman, and Champion Upgrade all get a little bit faster to research. This makes it a lot easier to get the champion in late game. So champions are gonna be a lot stronger this patch, combining the fact that Gambesons is now a technology, the fact that we're getting you know the techs a little bit faster, the champion switch will be really scary in late game. Uh, then we have Pikeman upgrade research time decreased and the cost of it of the upgrade also decreased. This is a huge buff. Honestly, at this point, I think knights are gonna have a hard time pushing into infantry and archer civilizations just because pikemen is going to be that much easier to pick up i still don't think pikemen alone is going to be enough to defend against knights in early castle age but i think it's uh going to be a lot easier to tech into pikemen when you need it and if you're defending a heavy knight push and you're already like well boomed going into pikemen is going to be a great solution so yeah pikemen upgrade gets a buff not sure this was actually warranted i think this actually might make knight play a lot harder which I, might be better at lower levels, but at top level, I think it is a little bit, uh, it might be a little bit annoying, but whatever. Next, we see supplies research time decrease from 35 seconds to 20 seconds. So rushing supplies into Gambeson will be you know, a lot quicker now, uh, which makes sense. Fishing ship coll collision size reduced from 0 0.5 to 0 0.4. Okay, and then trade cog collision size reduced, that's fine. Elite step lancer pierce armor increased from one to two. That's a good change, I like that one. Heavy scorpion upgrade cost decreased from 1,000 food 1100 wood to 800 food and 900 wood we might start seeing heavy scorpion play to counter champions in late game it is a possibility heavy scorpion still has a lot of problems and the unit itself didn't get buffed however it is slightly easier to get to the heavy upgrade so scorpions might make a return into the meta uh, we'll see how that develops i still think the unit won't see that much play in 1v1s but i still think uh you know maybe in team games you might see it here and there and it's you know, it could be an option, uh, potentially. Murder holes research time decreased from 60 seconds to 35 seconds. That's a good change. So now you can get murder holes when you think a push is coming and you will get it that much quicker. Sappers research cost changed from 400 food, 200 gold to 400 food and 200 wood. And it also gives you plus three bills, uh, plus three damage versus rams for your bills. So fair enough. All right, so now we've got a different change than from the pup. Elite Elephant Archer train time and the regular Elephant Archer chain time decreased from 34 seconds to 32 seconds. So you make them faster. And the Archer upgrade cost reduced from 1,000 food, 800 gold, to 900 food and 500 gold. So it's actually cheaper to get Elite Elephant. That is crazy. I don't think that that was needed. Elite Elephant Archer is actually a really good upgrade. The fact that it's getting a double buff, the unit gets made faster, and the upgrade is cheaper. I think Bengalis and Dravidians might be really strong this patch just because of that. That's a really big change. I think Bengalis, sp sp yeah, specifically Bengalis might be really strong because of that. Siege Elephant upgrade cost increased from 650 wood to 850 wood, uh, 850 food, sorry. 
Okay, that's fair enough. Genesis is now affected by recurve bow. It doesn't matter. Tanner galleon adjustments. You can read through that. Not that relevant. Um, all right. Moving on to the Sif specific stuff now. All right. So we have Aztecs. Jaguar Warrior. This is a new change. It's Jaguar Warrior and its elite version will have an extra pierce armor. So increase from one to two. They're going to receive Gambesons, which is nice. And they have 50 extra starting gold is only received after completing the first town center. Okay. I don't know why that's the case. I guess on Nomad stuff. Uh, they get the 50 gold later. It doesn't really matter too much. Next, we have Bengali's new bonus, melee cavalry gain plus two bonus damage for skirmishers. Another buff to Bengali. This will affect their light cav, and this will affect their Ratha. This is actually really huge. I don't know why we keep buffing Bengali's. I think Bengali's will actually be a really top tier civ right now. First of all, monks are really broken right now. Second of all, they're getting buffed left and right. Um... And they're also getting the new tech. So, like, Bengali just have everything right now. I think Bengali is going to be a scary civ, guys. It's almost like a meme to say that, but it's not a bad civ anymore. It's actually a really good civ. Elephant Archers got buffed. Their, their Ratha and their Light Cav got buffed. They have better infantry. Their unique tech could give them an extra pop in late game if they have a lot of monks. It's really, really smooth from what I can see here. Next up, we got Berbers. Villager movement speed adjusted to 5% in Dark Age and still 10% in Feudal. That's fine, just to nerf the Vil Rush a little bit. Bohemians, his site reforms cost reduced from 800 food to 450 gold to 500 food and 450 gold. This deck still won't see that much play though, um, but you know, it's, it's maybe a little bit more of an option now. Good nerf on the Britons, team bonus decreased from 20 to 10% faster working archery ranges. Fixed an issue with Town Center cost discount was not reducing the cost of repairing, cool. Bulgarians, they receive Gambesons. Stone discount does not apply to starting Town Center. Ooh. Okay, that's kind of a nerf to Bulgarians on Nomad. But they're not a really good Nomad Civ anyways, but that just makes them a more generic Nomad Civ, which is fair enough. Then we see Burgundians. So Flemish Militia will get changed completely here. Nothing's new here than what we saw in the, pat in the other patch video, so I'll just leave it if you guys want to read through it. Basically, Flemish Revolution got a pretty big nerf in general for going for like 200 militias, but it will be cheaper if you go for like a few militia. I don't think it's going to be a good tech from now on. We'll see what happens though. Uh, next up, we have Burmese. Elite Aramba upgrade cost adjusted from 1,100 food, 675 gold to 1,000 food and 750 gold. Okay, <laughs> that n not much change there, but fair enough. They receive Gambesons. Burmese Gambesons will be pretty strong. Uh, Byzantine Greek Fire now additionally provides fla 5 splash damage to Bomber Towers. Really weird, but fair. I wonder if this means that the Bomber Towers will now do Friendly Fire, which is, that could be interesting. Um, and they receive Gambesons. That's not going to matter that much for Byzantine, but it might make their Halb Champion comp pretty good, I guess. Then we see Celts. Stronghold effect increased from 25 to 33%. Uh, Wode Raider gets some buffs as well. Stronghold now additionally heals allied infantry near castles by 30 HP per minute. So they're making the Stronghold effect quite strong. That's their uh, Castle Age unique tech. I think that could be a nice buff to their, um, to their infantry play. And then furthermore, their Wode Raiders are getting a pretty big buff here. So Wode Raider and its elite version has a big HP increase from 65 to 80 to... Oh no, sorry. <laughs> 65 and its elite version... 80 okay it's just a 5 increase six to 70 85 i thought it was a 15 increase i was like yeah that's crazy uh so they're getting plus 5 hp and plus one attack so as you can see the attack is down here uh, that's a pretty big buff though that's two buffs to the world raider um i don't think this makes celts top tier i don't think celts suddenly become a really smooth sieve but i think this gives them a power unit that isn't halb or siege so it gives them another power unit to go for Celts could be pretty dangerous with this. We'll keep an eye on them. They also receive Gambesons, so their you know their champion play is pretty uh, pretty solid too. Chinese, no changes. They tried to change the start. Everyone said no, we don't like this. Not a lot of people were actually in favor of that change. They reverted it. Thank you. Don't touch a classic like Chinese. I know the win rate is different. You know, uh, or it's, you know, the win rate's crazy. It's like really high at high level and really low win rate at low level. That's fine. It's one sieve out of 42. You know what I mean? It's one weird sieve out of 42. Happy to see no changes there. Moving on, we've got Dravidians. New bonus, siege units cost minus 33% wood. Oh, dude, Dravidians and Megalis are going to be so freaking strong. I'm calling it right now. 
They're not going to be like top five, but they're definitely making a reappearance into the meta. Dravidians and Megalies, you heard it here first. Uh, they keep just they just keep getting buffed, man. I, I swear. Uh, this doesn't affect their armored elephants because they, they don't cost wood. So this affects bombard cannons, heavy scorpion, and onagers, and they get SO, so that's pretty good. Uh, medical corp reduce or cost reduced from 350 food, 250 gold. So I reduced a little bit of cost there and it, they buffed it. It's still going to be trash because healing for elephants isn't really that good. But it, I mean, it might end up being pretty good for elephant archers, actually. So th this could be helpful for elephant archers. We'll see. Oh, this also affects trebs. That's pretty big. Okay. Uh, okay, fair. And then receive gambesons. Nice. Now we have Ethiopians. Team bonus changed. Now it gives towers and outposts plus three line of sight. Uh, and then outpost plus three line of sight and, and stone cost removed. Oh, okay. It got changed from this to this. So now it's outpost plus three line of sight and stone cost removed. Okay. So instead of having more line of sight from towers, you get no stone on outpost. That's a nice little change. I like that. If you have Ethiopian ally, you can make outpost for, like, for a lot cheaper. Royal heirs effect changed from Shotel Warriors train 100% faster. So Shotels and Camo units receive minus 3 damage from mounted units. Elite Shotel Warrior train, decreased, train time decreased from 8 seconds to 4 seconds. So they gave you the Royal Hairs upgrade effect from before to make the Shotels train faster. They gave that for free when you get Elite Shotels. And they now made their Shotels and their Camo a lot stronger against mounted units. The Shotels will be really strong against Hussars because minus 3 damage is huge. Against Paladin, they're, they're still going to be weak, but they're going to be really strong against Camels and Hussar. That's my, uh, that's my uh, thought process there. Franks receive Gambesons. Goth, new bonus, hunt lasts 20% longer. Goth will be pretty strong after this, I think. I don't think Goth are going to be top tier, but I think they're going to jump to mid tier with this bonus. This bonus is really good. Gujaras. Uh, whatever this word is, cost increased from 200 food, 400 gold, to 500 food, 450 gold. Oh my god. Bro, I swear, I, Gujaras get double nerfed. Elite Shawarma Rider cost increased from 70 food, 20 gold, to 70 food, 30 gold. Double nerfed, that's so much. I don't even, if, if this was in the other patch, I don't think I even overreacted to this, but this is so bad. Gujaras will be destroyed. I'm happy about that because I hate Gujaras. I think they're boring to play. I think they're really annoying to face. So I'm happy they're going to be trash. But they're really going to be... They're going to be bad, guys. Gujaras will drop to, like, D tier. This is a really big nerf. Um, yeah. Like, they were really broken and they got nerfed to the ground. This is, like, their fourth time getting nerfed. This is crazy. Huns. Atheism cost increased from 500 food, 500 gold to 500 food and 300 wood. So now it doesn't cost you gold. It might make a, an appearance in 1v1, but still not 100% convinced. Incas. Andean Sling now additionally provides plus one attack to Slingers. Okay. Fix an issue where Slingers incorrectly gain attack speed from Thumbring. Fair. This is a big one. New bonus. Military cost minus 15, 20, 25, 30% food in Dark Feudal Castle and Imp. That's a pretty big bonus. I did try it out, and I wanted to record the video for YouTube, but it ended up being a pretty terrible game, so I probably won't be uploading that one. I will try to get another video with an Inca's gameplay showing off this bonus, but my initial reaction is that it's going to help a lot in mid-late game, but your main units are like Eagle, Monk, Crossbow. They don't cost food or that much food, and so this bonus isn't as OP as it sounds, but in late game, I think when it comes to like halberdier, skirm spamming, that's when it becomes really good. So early game doesn't help that much. Late game helps a lot. Um, lose access to supplies, but that's fine because you have this. Cameo cost increased from 60 food, 30 gold to 65 food, 30 gold, but it gets offset because of that. Slinger cost increase offset because of that. Bonus removed, start with a free llama, no longer a thing. Team bonus effect changed. Uh, change from Spearman Scrimmage plus 2 line of sight to start with a free llama. So their team bonus is now starting with a free llama, so you still have that. And Stone Discount does not apply to starting Town Center, which is fair. Big changes to Incas, guys. Next, we have the Japanese. They now get Hoardings, which is fair enough. Elite Samurai costs reduced from 60 food and 30 gold to 50 food and 30 gold. So a buff to the Samurais, and this is brand new. So that's exciting. Really Really happy about that. I think Samurai are a cool unit. Would like to see more of that. Catabuta cost is reduced. I am shocked that they reduced. This is a good technology. I am shocked they reduced it. 
This is a huge buff to the Japanese. Shout out Spirit of the Law. He might even hit rank 1 after this. Who knows? They also receive Gambeson. So Japanese get some massive buffs. I really love the Civ, so I'm happy that's happening. Khmer, Ballista, Elephant Armor changed from minus 2 to 0. I don't understand the whole, like, armor class stuff. So um, you can read here if you're interested. But basically nothing changes. You don't even make this unit if you're Khmer. You just go something else. Uh, okay, Koreans... Elite turtle ship range increased from 6 to 7. Okay, small buff to the turtle ships. That's nice. And then we see them getting Gamesons, which is fair. Lithuanians bonus for starting with 150 food change to each town center providing 100 food. I actually hate this bonus change. It is a buff to Lithuanians. Don't get it twisted. It is a buff. You start with 50 less food. But if you like in Castle Age, if you make more town centers, you get more food. This is going to make their boom really strong. What's going to happen is that Lithuania will try to go, on like, especially on maps like Arena, they're going to try to go for like 4 TC really fast in Castle Age, and then the food will help you keep the town centers running. So this will help their boom drastically. I personally don't like the bonus because it kind of changes the identity of Lithuanians being really strong early and really strong late. Now they're really strong throughout the entire game. Lithuanians will be quite deadly, guys. Keep an eye out for this. Uh. Then we have Malay. Receive infantry armor upgrades for free. Probably the biggest bonus in this whole patch. This is such a massive buff. It is absolutely ridiculous. Malay are going to be so strong. They also receive Gambesons. This, this upgrade helps not only the militia you know, get the extra armor in the early game. It helps their men at arm rush. It helps their longsword transition. It helps their pikeman transition. It helps their karambit transition. This helps so much, it's ridiculous. Uh, Malians, this is also the other Civ that got buffed the most. Uh, the Gebeto got some extra HP by 5, which is nice. And then 30% longer lasting gold mines. That bonus was changed to villagers drop off 15% more gold. And that is actually a really big bonus. So now they get more gold coming in. <clears throat> this is different than what they had in the pup though. So this is slightly different. I don't know why it's not bolded. The villagers drop off 15% more gold. That's a big bonus. Tigri additional arrows. That's a silver crown. Goes up to 8, which is nice. Wood discount not applied to starting town center. So Malians will be quite strong. And uh, That is, yeah, quite nice. It's the same. It wasn't pup? Okay. Okay, I guess I just leaked some of the discussions and debates on the back end of things. Sorry. Uh, but yeah, this was the pop, so it's going to be a pretty big change, which is good. Um, Persians receive Gambesons, not going to matter too much for them, but fair. 50 extra starting food and wood are received after completing the first town center. This is a big change for Persians. As you can see, all the early game bonuses will apply after your town center. This matters a lot for Nomad, because now you can't make your dock and a fishing ship before your town center comes up. Persians got a huge nerf on Nomad, but so did a lot of the other civilizations. It's still going to be a good civ on Nomad, but it's not going to be the undisputed best anymore. Poles Villager Regeneration Bonus now starts in Feudal Age. If you're getting Pole Vill Rush before, A, get good. B, it's not going to happen again. Uh, so that's yeah, not something you have to worry about until Feudal Age at least. Portuguese, their organ gets a massive change. This makes it worse overall. Read through it if you want. I'm not going to explain it because I don't know it myself. Uh, elite Caraval upgrade cost adjusted, fair enough, not going to matter too much, and they receive Gambeson. So overall, a nerf to organs, but a buff to the Civ, uh, aside from organs. Overall, it's a nerf, though, because organ gun was a really good tool for this Civ. Saracens, uh, Zillatry cost reduced from 500 food, 450 gold, to 400 food, 400 gold. Nice little buff to Saracens, I like that. And they also receive Gambesons, fair enough. Oh man, Sicilians. Castles and town centers built 100% faster. Change to castles built 50% faster and town centers built 100% faster. So basically castles will be slightly slower to build with the sieve. Uh, farm upgrade bonus changed from 100% to 125% food per upgrade. So now you really want to get those upgrades as Sicilians. Dungeons now affected by hoardings. That's a nice buff for late game. Dungeon can now train Spearman line. We saw that in the pup version. Yeah, that's really good. Dungeon now functions as a prerequisite for archery range and stable. So you don't need to make a barracks in early game. You could make a dungeon. What we're going to see, I'm pretty sure about it, is rush the feudal age, make a dungeon on your wood line, your berries, or your gold, and then you can go for a range or a stable after that. And I think we're going to see Sicilians be a defensive civilization playing around that dungeon. 
and then in late game you have a ton of options first crusade was nerfed so yeah it, well it's not it's been changed you get less units but you pay less for it as well i think it's just a pretty meh upgrade at this point uh sergeants do get a buff though of their on their hp the elite upgrade gets lowered they repair low, slower and build slower in feudal which is fine they receive gamesons and yeah uh, no no mad nerf basically so overall, I'll summarize this by saying that Sicilians are going to be better. This is a net buff, and they're going to be different. But this is a pretty huge buff, to be honest. All of these changes combined. Look Thank you, Colt White, for the four months tier one. Moving on to Slavs, we now see that the Boyer cost has been adjusted to 60 food, 70 gold. Drushina cost reduced from absurd amount of food to just 900, 500. They receive Gambesons, and free supplies also includes free Gambesons. Really big changes for the Slavs. I like them. Helping out the infantry. It's not massive changes now that I'm reading it, but it's nice buffs. Quality of life buffs for the Slavs. Helps them get to their infantry. Spanish Inquisition gives missionaries plus one range. Conquistador minus one pierce armor. Elite unchanged. Good change there. I like that one. New bonus. Gain 20 gold for each technology researched. Really strong bonus. Receive Gambesons. Nice. Build speed bonus does not apply to starting town centers, so Spanish are not going to be insane on Nomad anymore, but they're still going to be kind of strong. Conquistador with Spanish is still good. This is a net buff for sure. Tatars, Keshek train time increased. Nerf to the Keshiks, I like that. They're really strong. Turks, artillery cost changed. It's a nerf. Tuins, elite Teutonic knights cost reduced from 85 food and 40 gold to 85 food and 30 gold. So 40 gold to 30 gold. That was a new change, uh, a brand new change. I like that one. Um, yeah, and they received Gambeson. Small bonus to the Tutans, nothing huge though. Vietnamese, paper money changed, nothing crazy. And Vikings basically get a new bonus where it says Chieftain's effect now also provides infantry with gold generation while attacking villagers, trade units, and monks. So you kill a vill, you get five gold. You kill a monk or a trade unit, you get 20 gold. Fair enough. Chieftain cost has also been reduced. Berserker Gang has been replaced with Boggs Vagar, and it gives Archer Line and Longboats plus one attack, but Longboats lose one of their bonus damage against ships. So Longboats will basically remain unchanged after you get the tech, and actually worse before you get the tech. Elite Berserk Healing increased from 20 HP per minute to 40 HP per minute, so they're basically giving you the Berserker Gang um, uh, healing for free, so Berserks are going to be very strong, and they also receive Gambesons. All right, there's also a bunch of map balance you guys can read through. I'm going to go ahead and link the patch in the description below. Guys, if you enjoyed the video, make sure to drop a comment and subscribe on the channel. Let me know in the comments below if you guys you know, liked the patch, if you're excited to play it, what you like the most, that kind of stuff. I'll go ahead and read through them when I get some spare time and reply to some of them that I like. I'm going to go back on the stream now and play some games to get you guys some more content on YouTube. Thank you guys and peace.